About 18 months ago, I built myself what I consider to be the ultimate GameCube. This is a modified Japanese console, model DOL-001, with an optical drive emulator, an SD card bracket, and an SD to SP for additional storage. To finish it off, I got an insurrection carby to output a digital signal directly to HDMI. I've been really happy with these mods, but since completing this project, a number of alternative products for HDMI output on the GameCube have popped up. One of these products is the Retrobit Prism HD. Now, in case you weren't aware, all of these products are based on the open source GC video. So in theory, both the picture quality that they produce and the options in the menu should be identical. However, the features across these products vary. Choosing the right solution will come down to what you want to do with it and obviously the price. Up until now, I've been satisfied with the Insurrection Kabi. It's a solid entry-level HDMI adapter. It doesn't have the bells and whistles of some of the more expensive models, but it's well built, easy to use, and the quality of the image it outputs is excellent. What it does lack is the ability to be updated, at least not without opening it up, which I really don't have the skills or confidence to do. That's why the Retrobit Prism HD piqued my interest. Just like the Kabi, it's an entry-level solution, although unlike the Kabi, it does support firmware updates via USB-C connection. So, is the Prism HD the new king of the entry-level GameCube adapters? Well, that's what you're here to find out. Now before we go any further, I think it's important to point out that these adapters only work with the GameCube models DOL-001. The reason for this is that the later revision, DOL-101, doesn't have the digital output. If you're in power regions, the HD Retrovision component cables are compatible with 101 models, and the upside to this is that you can then use them with a scaler like the RetroTINK 5X. I mentioned at the start that the picture quality across these devices theoretically should be identical. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison with the Kabi. I personally can't tell the difference between the two. Perhaps the Kabi is slightly darker, but the difference here certainly isn't night and day. Even though the picture that the Prism outputs is only a maximum of 576p, it's still very crisp and, most importantly, it doesn't introduce any lag. Colors also appear vibrant, unlike some third-party cables which can look washed out or oversaturated. The other resolutions it supports are 240p, 480i, 480p, and the equivalent power resolutions 288p, 576i, and of course 576p, which I've already mentioned. Unfortunately, there isn't any upscaling here, although this isn't a limitation exclusive to the Prism. None of these adapters support that yet, which is a shame. The Prism can line double interlace resolutions though, so 480i and 576i. For these, it uses Bob D interlacing, which some people find a little distracting because of the flicker it introduces. If you don't like the shimmering effect that it adds, you can simply turn this feature off. Like all of its peers, you will get an image desync when the resolution changes. Desyncs usually result in a few seconds of black screen, and the time you're left without an image will depend on your display. This doesn't happen in every game, and is most common in games that have cinematics that are rendered at a different resolution than what the gameplay is. If you're recording gameplay with a capture card like an Elgato, then this can end the recording, which means that you might need to keep hitting that record button every time the resolution changes. Depending on the types of games you play, this might not be a big deal. For YouTubers, streamers, and for people that play a lot of games that are heavy on cinematics like Rogue Squadron 3, this is something to bear in mind with these plug-and-play adapters. I should probably also clarify that both the Prism and Kabi also output audio, so there's no need to run two sets of cables, the HDMI will handle everything. From a software point of view, the Prism and Kabi are again almost identical. They have very similar menu options, a very similar remote, and they're both plug and play. The only difference is that the Prism is running a more recent version of GC Video, which can also be easily updated. Out of the box, the unit I got came with 3.0 installed, and I've since updated it to 3.1. If you want to update the firmware, it's a relatively straightforward process. Retrobit has their own updater for PC, which you can download for free from their site. Once downloaded, you just run the updater, plug in the Prism via USB-C, select the firmware version you want to install, and then click Update. I had to try a couple of different USB-C cables and run the updater in administrator mode before it would detect my device, so it's not a flawless experience. Once it's up and running though, it's very easy. There are a ton of different options in the menu to suit both beginner tinkerers like myself to more advanced users who really want to dial in the best possible image. If you don't have any intention of messing around with these settings, then don't stress. The Prism will deliver an excellent image with the default factory settings. 
All of the gameplay recorded for this video has been captured on the default settings, with only dithering switched off via the Swiss Homebrew software. When looking at the build quality, this is where the Prism doesn't hold up quite as well as the Kabi. The casing feels a bit cheaper and the design is kind of boring. At the end of the day though, you're not going to be looking at it after you've plugged it in. Even in the tidiest of setups, it'll be hidden behind the console, so really what it looks like isn't that important. The connection that plugs into the console is metal and this part does feel solid, although I would strongly recommend getting yourself a support bracket. I use one for my Kabi as well. This will help eliminate strain on the connector and you can purchase these from LaserBear or even print it yourself if you happen to own a 3D printer. I've left a link to these options below if you're interested. Overall, the Prism is a great option for anyone looking to get a sharp, lag-free image out of their GameCube to use on modern displays. The lack of upscaling might sound like a turn-off, but most displays handle 480p well. On my entry-level 55-inch 4K Samsung, for example, the picture is remarkably crisp. Now, do I think the Prism is better than the Kabi? It certainly could be, depending on how you want to use it. If you want to have the latest version of GC video and tinker around with the settings, then the Prism is a no-brainer as an entry-level solution. If you want to have a slightly better build quality and something just to plug and play and forget about, go for the Kabi. Either way, the end result in terms of picture quality will be very similar. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you out. If you've got any questions, you can just drop them in the comments below. But otherwise, thanks for your time.